Remember what they took from you. Oh my God. We, we have to. We have to watch this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We have to watch this shit. The title is literally. Oh my God, everybody. We're going to watch this John Doyle vid. And the thumbnail says, remember what they took from you. Literally the meme of the screeching, crying Wojak Nazi. How to actually combat woke capitalism. Let's find out. Cola after an internal memo showed diversity training where employees were told to be, quote, less white. It's part of the company racism training program. People taking. Maybe they should. No. In part are given advice on how to be less white, less arrogant, less, uh, less certain, less defensive and less arrogant. A spokesperson. Spooky for music. Oh, a presentation. Right wingers are so scared. Spoon. They are scared of a single fucking PowerPoint. These little bitches are so fucking they are shaking in their motherfucking boots over one training powerpoint said it's just part of training meant to create a quote inclusive workplace i do so oh. i think there's a lot of oh, learning that's no. taking place and a oh. lot of <laughs> this is this point right here when that happens is when all of the boomers shit their pants awareness that is uh i didn't uh did watch do a segment on that whatever i wasn't as oh, fuck. look no not that i don't care about vosh's content vosh's content is great but it's a fucking powerpoint who fucking cares aware seven years ago when i had my son about the racist images in a lot of dr seuss's children's books story everybody's talking about this morning that big rebrand of mr potato head what did i tell you melting down about the potato head literally this guy this fucking john doyle mind you is a nazi john doyle jqs all the time this guy thinks he wants to restore america to a stronger time having a meltdown over Mr. Potato Head. Can we just take a moment and just appreciate that? Mr. Potato Head? The Ubermensch. The, listen, the Ubermensch. They can handle anything. They can fight any war, win any battle. Except for Mr. Potato Head. You must keep Mr. Potato Head away. It's their kryptonite. And children's books about gender. The classic children's toy now has a gender neutral name and. This audio mixing is painfully bad. I'm sorry, my ears are bleeding too. John Doyle in. He's not even old enough to smoke, is he? Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. I know what you're thinking. Why are you still in the original studio? What has become of the interim studio, of the new studio? Relax, we're getting there. But in the meantime, I came back to Michigan to pick up a few things and also to record two very important videos for you guys to tide you over until the new studio is up and running, at which point the content kitchen will be firing on all I'm cylinders. Sorry. We'll be cranking out videos like the Biden administration bombing Middle Eastern countries. You love to see. So one video. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, uh, what we're talking about here today, I do want to go over a few things as it pertains to the, the channel as a whole that I think are important. I'll probably have to explain the jersey here at some point. But before we I'll even get into that, it. I have to tell you something. I have to remind you of something, which I'm sure you already know because I'll take you're a look genius. At that you have agency. You analyze the trends. And that is the fact that we're living in uncertain times and millions have come to realize the importance of the Second Amendment. If you're looking for the perfect accessory to go with that perfect firearm, get an American-made holster. Demolitors, embarrassment, patented full refund, the people holsters.com slash Doyle. Oh, if he Repeating makes all of this information content? in the other Wait, video, John well. Doyle, what is he gonna cook? Like, like, what's he gonna do? Put like fucking fried chicken wings in a in a jello mold so he, he has 50 style food? Well, because I think it's important, and so I might just shamelessly recycle the footage, but I'll put a timestamp up right now so that you can skip this if you'd like. But about two weeks ago, I put out a two hour long dissertation on the harms of pornography that is literally irrefutable, hundreds of sources, and I did this all completely free of charge. This is the look of a man whose balls are about to fucking explode. This guy hasn't had sex in 12 years and he isn't masturbating anymore. 
much. Maybe because I really do just care. Maybe it's like Elijah Schaefer said, maybe I'm mildly autistic. I don't know. But the point being that the video was posted. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you for participating involuntarily in the meta commentary on the importance of delayed gratification. It was all a metaphor. But I do just want to take a second to talk about that video because the responses have been overwhelmingly. Gay fesh. Yes, obviously. It's all virtue signaling. These people don't fucking do that. This guy is probably jacking off right now. This guy's got porn up on his screen right now positive uh, and inspirational, the comments, emails, messages, everything. True! And you might remember that the video was literally being censored by Google after it was posted. Like you could search for it on YouTube or on Google word for word and it wouldn't show up. But then you search for it on like DuckDuckGo or something and it would come right up. And it couldn't just... Twenty bucks says that his parents have fucking parental filters on. You want me to search it? Let's search it. Let's do it. Let's search it. What's it called? John Doyle porn is destroying you. It's literally the first result. It's literally the second and first result and the third result and the fourth result. He's just a liar. He's just a fucking liar. Whoops. Because the title of the am video I right? contained the word porn because other videos with that word and their titles would come up, including the one that we did last year, which was much less thorough. And that really just puts into perspective what we're up against. They're that controlling video wasn't some you with big porn. against leftist economics or anything even explicitly political. That part was additive. That was the only part that is relatively up for debate. That video proved that pornography is extremely addictive, that it has addicted the vast majority of the men in this country, and that it is harming them psychologically, spiritually, sexually, etc. It proved that. And then for from there, I extrapolated that if we continue to exist in that condition, then we will ultimately lose our country. That part I still believe. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going, porn stars. This is right. We're calling upon you, the OnlyFans army, the armies of succubuses all across the country. Keep cranking out that porn because it will undermine capitalism. It will undermine America forever. This is our opportunity. Leave, but I acknowledge that's just my inference, but the rest is irrefutable. And so what that means at the very least is that they wanted to stop you from realizing that our country's men are harming themselves and perhaps that you're harming yourself, uh, which if you remember is something that I said in the video that they literally want. This is literally what he's doing right now. Hold on. I, that's a risky, that's a risky Google. Hold on a second. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this is John Doyle right now. The anti-masturbation cross. Safely train your children to keep their hands off their dangerous sin zones. Papoose cross and arm immobilizer work together to self safely secure a self-raping child. Adjustable canvas straps with Velcro. Adjustable head strap incorporated into the backboard. Optional arm immobilizing accessory slides underboard for firm spread eagle position. Stop masturbation now. This is John Doyle right now want to hurt you. And if you subscribe to what I believe is a completely reasonable inference, which I outlined in that video as well, it also means that we're correct in saying that the people pulling the strings are using pornography as a weapon against you because they know that it demoralizes you and will eventually enable them to totally conquer you. So just keep that in mind because ultimately this channel was not started. I don't know how long can the right act how long can the right actually um like keep going like this because like see the reason why the alt right got popular for a while is because they ditched the christian stuff that said that you can't have drugs or smoke or 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 have sex but now they're like literally just like don't you don't masturbate if you masturbate you're weak and the and they're they're going to get you they're coming for you right now are, are they going to keep popularity? I feel like they're going to lose popularity with that. ...to recite decades-old arguments against centrally planned economies. It was not started to introduce contemporary arguments in favor of federalism. It was very simply started to help people. And that's not a virtue signal. Like, speaking very honestly, it's actually a political strategy. Because, you know, obviously we care about helping people. But I'll share with you something that I realized a very long time ago, which is that 
this battle that we're in, if it were an intellectual battle, then we'd never lose. But we are. We're losing badly, and we have been for a very long time. And that's because it's a spiritual battle. And <laughs> or, or maybe you're just losing the intellectual battle. Have you considered that maybe you're just losing the intellectual battle? We're not well. That's why we're losing. And so we want to help people because ultimately that is the pathway to success for us. And that's why this channel is so heavily targeted because they know that if we can heal enough people spiritually, then we will just march down the field. And we just made some pretty decent progress with that. We just helped thousands of people break or begin to break their pornography addictions. Imagine what that... <laughs> this is so sad. This is so sad. They've become so sad. This is so funny. That butterfly effect is going to look like. I'm thinking about getting billboards too. Spread awareness. I don't know. More on that later. But the point is that we all knew that this video was going to help a lot please, of Please, please get anti-masturbation billboards. Oh my God, John Doyle. Please get anti-masturbation billboards. I can't think of a better investment. Please, for the love of God. Oh my God, please, please. That would, that would defeat the lefties forever, John Doyle. Please get anti-masturbation billboards. And in fact, you should advertise the anti-masturbation cross on the billboards. Please people and it has and that's great and just today is a jacob wool moment but i was in a coffee shop i was planning out these videos i'm there for yeah. 10 minutes and this kid comes up to me and if you follow me on instagram you saw this because i posted on my story about it you should definitely follow me by the way because i post pretty good content throughout the day but he comes up to me and he's like bro your video changed my life i'm done with porn bro i'm done dude that is so fucking awkward can you fucking imagine if you're at the coffee shop and you're just sitting there and like there's this random weird looking like this there's there's this guy sitting at one table and another kid comes up and goes, dude, your video, I was jacking it all the time. I was blasting cum all over the walls of my bedroom. I once accidentally jacked it so hard that I blasted my dad down the stairs, dude. Your video helped me. Woo! Thank you so much for helping me to stop cranking my hog at all hours of the day. Now I can become strong and help defeat the, the, them. I could defeat them. Anyway, thanks, dude. Total Chad, totally high energy. But of course, this is just one side of the coin. Because remember, we knew that it was going to help the boys take control of themselves. But we also knew that we were going to get lots of backlash from the weak, pathetic, degenerate men of society. And we were correct. Because, of course, we're always correct. And it's Whoa, bro, your coffee reminds me of the cum I used to splash all over the floor back when I used to jack it to porn all the time. But now I saw your video and I only jack it some of the time. Thanks a lot, man to note that I could have made a two hour video about why vanilla ice cream is inherently right wing, which it is. Whoa, dude, your vanilla ice cream remember, reminds me of the, the consistency of my cum after I would freeze my balls in ice so I could keep jacking it for extra hours of the day. But I don't do that anymore, dude. Now I, now I only jack it twice a day. And nobody Thanks, panics bro. because it's all part of the plan. But you make one two hour anti-pornography dissertation, well then everybody panics because it's not part of the plan because it highlights their degeneracy and their deviancy and their insecurities and so they have to attack it. Dude, like, he's just not even, he's, I know he's been masked off for a while, but like, come on. Like, how do people not see this shit? How do people listen to this guy and not go, what the fuck does he mean when he says degeneracy? painfully predictable and so i would just like to take a second to illustrate the difference between the types of people that we're dealing with here take a look at the coffee chat i'll point out what we're all seeing i'll point out the obvious you've got an extremely positive cantle tilt those are the hunter eyes you've got a steep angle on the brow ridge as indicated by the sheer volume of his eyebrows is he doing unironic phrenology right now Obviously, the locks of flowing hair, wider set nasal bridge, and the cope shield makes it difficult, but you can still see there's a very strong jawline present. He was about 6'1", solid shoulder to waist ratio. And so you take this guy, you take the coffee, Chad. Now compare him to any one of the guys who got triggered by my anti-porn dissertation. I don't think I need to explain any further. I think the vindication... Nice. Ha <laughs> ha. Reddit meme. Asian speaks for herself here. You have the average porn fan versus the average hawk appreciator. That's all I'll say about that. There's a strong connection between your spiritual health and your outward appearance, and the aforementioned dichotomy example. <laughs> oh my god. This is literally. 
I never thought that I would live to see the day when popular channels or relatively popular channels on YouTube were doing the Christian meme of if you jack it, you'll have a pencil neck and look like a nerd. Literal. Spiritual health affects your appearance. Your skull shape will literally change depending on how much you worship God. Dude, what does that say about you? If your spiritual health changes your appearance, you look like... You look like the the virgin version of the fucking angry video game nerd. What the fuck are you talking about? Dude, how much were you jacking it if you actually believe that? Amplifies that quite well. It's like it's like we talked about in the video. The horseshoe theory of practical yeah, intelligence. You've got yeah. the did, guys, did you know that your did you know that your sexual your spiritual health affects your external appearance? That's why I'm a Chad. You're telling on yourself a little bit there, dude low IQ you're ugly and you got the average IQ well that's actually an ad hominem attack and then you've got the high IQ you look spiritually unwell therefore I will not listen to you though I will pray for you who needs dopamine when you have vindication boys the last thing I'll say though oof um, a lot of people have been asking how they can help the channel or help what we do as far as that goes. I don't know. As far as like the channel goes, the best thing to do, uh, go to the website, heckoffcommy.com, get a membership over there. That's how we keep the lights on. That's how we're able to do this, do cooler stuff, make better content, put up billboards, who even knows? And I try to only talk about- Oh my God, please, please do the billboards, please. For Please. No, wait, don't, don't, don't do them. They will defeat us forever. The anti-masturbation billboards will destroy our lives it like once a month or so because i don't like plugging it but you know if you want to help that's the best way and then you get access to a bunch of cool features through the website and we're actually we're going to be putting a lot more content on the website once we get the new studio the stew as a uh, proxy cameraman all the calls it up and running uh, a lot more content in general is going to be coming out we got big plans for this year very exciting so if you want to help go to the website get a it's really weird to me that he actually has a lisp. He makes fun of gay people, but he actually has a lisp. He's like, we got a lot of really cool things coming up this year. And uh, yeah, not like those homosexuals, though. Membership. It's only a couple bucks a month. And then you're he literally... Just did, he just did a soy boy uh, l gay lisp. And he actually has a lisp. Helping bring people to our side, making them more disciplined, ultimately helping to build a pretty strong coalition. So we're excited. And remember... The more memberships we sell, the sooner I can have Dude, kids. Dude, so you've, you've been pitching your fucking website for 10 minutes of a 28-minute video. Curious to see what happens when I start multiplying? That's the way to do it. I actually, you know, jokes aside, I think that'll introduce opportunities to teach about homeschooling, building relationships with other young conservative families, things like that. I don't know too much about that right now, but... But when I All do right, and I'm boy. working through those things, I think it'll be good to share with people. So anyways, that's that. Very epic. And now we will talk about that. That very epic. A woke capitalism. Yeah, he has a natural lisp and he makes fun of he tried to do a gay voice, but it just sounded like his own voice. Which is something that has totally blindsided conservatives. We never expected it. And we really don't have any idea how to combat it. And even now, no one is really offering any solutions. And so I figured that I'd throw my hat in the ring, give my thoughts. But I'll start by talking. Oh, my God. Another ad? Talking about my jersey. We're, at, we're almost at the 10-minute mark. We're almost halfway through the video. And he's still fucking plugging products. Here. Because I've had this pathetic. Patriot sticker on my laptop This was about combating woke capitalism. And people are always like, oh, he's a Patriots fan. And so I'll explain the lore, which is basically that I'm not necessarily a Patriots fan and I'm not even necessarily a football fan. I'm just a Tom Brady fan. And that's for two reasons. The first of which being that he's a great source. I'm sure you're a big Tom Brady fan. Of inspiration for me because people just keep really, really like the way that he inflates his balls. Being like, Tom Brady's going to lose. And then Tom Brady keeps being like, hmm, disagree. And then the other one is that I noticed that all of the worst people in the world consistently root against Tom Brady because he's white, because he's a Trump supporter, most importantly, because he's successful. And leftism is fundamentally just the political mobilization. Yeah, of course. You didn't, you didn't, you thought this was a, would you, what, did you think this was an ad video? You wouldn't be fucking mistaken. You wouldn't be wrong about insecure. that. Insecure. And they hate winners because it reminds them that they're losers. And so they hate Tom Brady because Tom Brady wins games. And I could literally make this into its own two hour dissertation. Why supporting Tom Brady is- Dude, we get it. We get it. You want to fucking tongue his ass. We get it right wing but i will finish by saying that as conservatives we acknowledge and respect hierarchy we acknowledge that success and competence are things to be aspired to not to be envied or punished and that requires accepting that tom brady is the goat and i don't even want to hear well my deflate gate well he kissed his son on the lips yeah who spoon fed you those narratives the communist mainstream media that's who 
we're about to get into the NFL, how it ties into woke capitalism. I just, I have a lot to say. I haven't been behind the desk as much as I would have liked to have. What? Is he, what is this? What is this thing? Oh, I haven't been behind the desk as much as I wanted to. What is this? Is, is, is Milo Yiannopoulos' gay energy being filtered into John Doyle right now? Is that what's happening? Is he always like this? I don't remember him being like this. I don't remember him being like this. I mean, dude, stop being a right winger and you can be who you want to be and it'd be, you'd probably be fine, honestly. Ben recently, I'll tie this up by saying that the window of appreciation for white male excellence is closing. And so have fun with it while you can because it's closing quickly. Because even when Brady signs to a new club after 20 years in New England and wins yet another championship at 43 years old, you have people claiming it's... I mean, that's very... Fall Gaia, that's very possible. I'm not kidding you. That is very possible. I have a relative who did literally that. Racist just because he's white. And if trends continue, then white men aren't going to be able to be successful at anything anymore because we'll have to abdicate and yield to women and people of color because it's not about equality of opportunity anymore. And it's not even about equality of outcome anymore. It's about everyone getting a seat at the table except the white men because they think that you're oh, totally, dude. It's actually yeah, yeah. Poor white men. Did white men are the most are the most persecuted people in the country now? Total equality of outcome. It's like cumulative equality of outcome. Okay, dude. In the macro timeline, because what they're saying is, well, you know, white people occupied these positions in the past, so now they can't anymore to make up for that, because that's how we solve racism. So enjoy it while you can. Enjoy your Tom Brady's. Enjoy your Donald Trump's, your PewDiePie's, your Mike Lindell's, your Jake Paul's, all while you can, because the woke doctrine is a cancer. It's not self-containing, and it's going to spread everywhere. And again, this doesn't mean that people... This is what I'm talking... Again... Every time we watch a right winger video, they live in they live in their own fantasy world. This guy thinks this guy thinks that the world is that like white people aren't currently occupying every major position of power in in America. Because like two non-white men have gotten positions. People who aren't white men can't be good at things. Professional sports as a whole are Dude, like what are disproportionately you dominated by black men. It's just to say that for whatever reason, white men are told that they have to apologize for being good at things simply because they're white. And that's who dumb. has ever said that. So, you know, but anyways, the NFL is a good segue into what we're talking about because the NFL is an example of something. All right. We finally got into the topic of the video at 11 minutes. Strong Karen energy? Yeah. Has monetized political correctness very successfully, especially considering the degree to which it exists in American society. And I'm not saying that this is done necessarily with malicious intent, but I'll give you two examples. And the first one is applicable to all professional sports, which is that they- You know, I hear John Doyle talking about the most oppressed class all the time, white men, but I hear him forgetting about the actual most oppressed class of all time, gamers. Where the fuck is his game? Where, where the fuck is his gamer pride? Fucking. Exist to monetize what is effectively inconsequential and politically correct tribalism. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with sports, with following sports. That's not the point. The point is that the average American man, having been fed propaganda throughout his entire life, is sooner to take issue with someone criticizing his sports team than his state, his country, his church, etc. Like, we don't even know what it means to be a man anymore. We don't know how we're supposed to exist in society. Ah, yes. Pillar of masculinity right here. Literally doing the soy face. Look at this. This is literally... The fucking soy face. And he's like, we don't even know what a man is anymore. We don't know what it means to be an American. We don't know what our purpose is. And so we just invest all of that into sports ball. And we buy the tickets and we watch the games and we identify with our team. Dude, nobody we, says sports ball anymore. We will live and die by it as though it's yeah, something more important than what it really is, which is literally just a sports team. And again, this is not to say that sports don't bring people together or that they're unimportant. This is just to say that human nature is predisposed towards know, tribalism, that's... us and them, which by the way, doesn't mean that the them group is bad or worse than the us group, uh, just that they're different, which is an obvious reality and we're not allowed to acknowledge the existence of us in terms of nationality in terms of faith in terms of culture in terms of gender now but i don't know why he does this why does he cut to this weird angle i don't get this also real quick question what part of america are you not allowed to be christian or male like seriously let's have a fucking reality can we have a reality check here can we get a reality check here we're totally allowed to channel all of that into the incredibly lucrative and totally woke enterprise of professional sports. 
Daddy, today at school, we learned that America was founded upon racism and genocide and that white people owe reparations to everyone who isn't white. Oh, and also that Russell Wilson is closer to being a top five QB than Aaron Rodgers. Damn it, I told you we need to take kids out of schools. It's the same thing with the last Super Bowl. Politically correct tribalism. What the fuck? What the fuck was that accent? I'm, what the fuck is he even trying to do? I don't even, this is like a fever dream. Remember the Will Ferrell ad? Beat Norway. Norway's lame. Grr, Norway. Everyone thought that's so funny. Why? Because it was funny. Picking petty fights with other countries during one of the most widely broadcast events in the year is objectively a good bit. But ask yourself this. Are we ever going to see a Beat Mexico commercial or something similar? No, we're not. We're not going to see a, let's bring our... Is it maybe, is it maybe because... They were the United States was going against Norway and not Mexico. Maybe maybe that's the reason why it was about Norway. Jobs back from Mexico type commercial because that would be offensive because Mexico isn't a white country. You can only poke fun at Dude, white. Dude, oh my God! Drink some water. He keeps doing this fucking dry ass swallow where he's like, <coughs> fucking drink some fucking water. You're dry. Wait, is he drying out because he's been jacking it so much that he literally doesn't have any water in his fucking body? Countries and white people, just like you can only criticize white countries and white people. <laughs> I love that you said that. Stay hydrated. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And this is what woke capitalism does. General Motors, which is one of the biggest companies in the country, they take out an ad during the Super Bowl, which is one of the most significant events on the calendar of the United States, and they get funny man Will Ferrell to be funny, and they basically get to tease the literal country of Norway, like, hee hee, hey Norway, we're gonna get you. We're gonna, oh, 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 we're coming to get, ah, we're gonna get you. And everyone's happy. We feel this manufactured sense of unity as a country because we're mobilizing our screen people during the big game to bully a European country. But then the reality of the situation is that General Motors Chad fluid drinker versus virgin dry jacker. Workers has a pretty bad habit of pouring jobs into other countries to displace American workers. Because as we'll talk about, woke capitalism has no ties to country. They don't care about America. They don't care about the American people. They just care about money. And they view you as a source of that. And they know that if they put funny man on the screen and tease the silly Europeans for a minute and a half, then they can make you clap. Is this guy actually offended that Norway got made fun of in a video? That's what, it seems like that's what he's actually, look, he's literally soy facing about this right now. Literally soy facing about a, a, a thing that was making fun of Norway. Way. He's like, stop making fun of Europe. Like a seal. And so in understanding woke capitalism, we have to be clear because woke capitalism doesn't mean the coffee shop in your neighborhood that has the gender neutral bathroom signs. That's not what we're talking about. He we're did, he's still dying. Is this guy okay? Please, somebody fucking bring him a cup of water for God's sake. Basically talking about conservatives having a real Caesar moment when the big businesses in capitalism that we've spent the last 40 years shilling for are actually working steadfastly against us and our interests. And so to answer the question, how do we combat woke capitalism? Some will say we can boycott. As you may have noticed, that doesn't actually work. Some will say go woke. Uh, what is it? No, get woke, go broke. You may have noticed that it actually isn't true. And even if it were true. <laughs> you all been pushing this forever and it doesn't work because no one gives a shit about your pathetic, weak-willed, snowflake bullshit, John Doyle. No one fucking cares. You sound like a whiny bitch. It wouldn't matter because they're not actually going broke. Worst case scenario, they're losing like a little bit of money. But even that doesn't matter because what we're finding out is that people don't actually pursue what is most profitable. They pursue what is most valuable. And there is a difference because money is just a physical manifestation of value. And so what we're learning is that to the Leninists occupying these companies going... Ah, yes. Well-known Leninists. The owners of the NFL, the owner of Coca-Cola, the owner of Anheuser Busch, Anheuser Anheuser Busch, Jesus fucking Christ. Woke is more valuable to them than making money, and Good in night, many cases, Corp. it's even worth losing Rest money. Well. we'll come back to explain the corporate Leninists. But to answer the question, how do we combat woke capitalism? We don't because we can't. And the reason for that is that capitalism is a machine. It is a system. It is amoral. It simply monetizes what is popular, and it also creates and supplies demand. The Nazbol Vortex. Nazbol Vortex. 
And, and so it's not a problem that can be solved with a few boycotting campaigns or what have you, but rather the symptom of a problem that will take decades to solve, assuming that we can even solve it. And that problem is that we have monetized our own self-destruction. Why is that? It requires a few components, most importantly being that there's a demand for it. And this doesn't mean that the demand necessarily exists, which of course it does, but just as demand leads to supply. What is he even talking about anymore? Supply can also lead to demand. Like you can put things in front of people that they didn't know that they wanted or that they didn't know even existed and you can create demand for it. And it's even easier to do that with information. Uh, in the marketplace of ideas, because when you control the narratives and the flow of information, which they do, you can make people believe pretty much everything and believe it passionately. And there's a few reasons for this. Um, you've got some people who legitimately believe these things, but more importantly, you have the masses. You have the masses of people who cannot think for themselves and frankly, don't even have any interest in thinking for themselves. Like so, so much of right wing. Dude, these people despise everyone around them. They who is he talking to he's pr he's trying to do a right populist message but he's talking about the unwashed idiot masses who do you think you're pitching to my dude right-wing discourse is centered around please can you read these statistics proving that black lives matter is predicated upon a lie bro please can you debate me on this subject so i can own you and it's like no one cares they post a black square on Instagram because the screen people told them to. You're swiping up like, actually, if you read the independently conducted autopsy report, bro, no one cares. You care and I care. Like, that's great. But the average person doesn't care. He's talking, he's talking about how you don't need to tell the truth because it doesn't matter. And they will just conform to the predominant trends and narratives in society, which is why it's important that we take control of them. And this isn't brainwashing, by the way. John Desperate. It's not like if the actual brainwashing stopped, then people would just agree with us anyways. But no, it's not brainwashing. Oh, definitely, dude. You definitely sound very convinced of your ideology. You, you definitely do not sound desperate, pathetic, and like you haven't jacked it in, in three weeks and are, are literally, literally struggling to not crank one out right in front of the camera to control the narratives to make them acknowledge the reality of gender, uh, family structure, life, morality, and what have you. It's actually the opposite, which is allowing people to flourish in a society that doesn't seek their self-destruction for the expansion of the power and wealth of a tiny minority and allowing them to do so the without having to live their lives in America, a constant John flow of Doyle. information because that's not how life was meant to be lived. But we have to do that now so that we can put the communists in the ground, metaphorically intellectually intellectually so that our kids and grandkids don't have to worry about it so intensely and this gets back to the corporate leninists and i'm using that term loosely to describe a broader reality which we'll get into but basically can we you can hear this fucking you can hear this fucking lip smack from across the world every time he tries to swallow the world's driest the man with the world's driest mouth the timeline of leftist history is a cycle of exponentially more complex mental gymnastics where you take a theory and then you make a prediction based on it. And then when the prediction doesn't happen, you just double down and explain how your theory is actually still correct. And then you repeat this until you achieve tenure. Wait, and so that's what you just said you needed to do. You said that people are too stupid. So you just need to keep repeating what you believe in until eventually you win. You're literally projecting right now. So the original Marxist theory was that the workers of the world would unite and realize their exploitation and they would have a revolution against the capitalist class, but then that went ahead and didn't happen. And so Lenin came through and said that the masses would never start the revolution and that they needed a class of revolutionary elites to occupy the institutions in society that would grant them the power and influence to educate the masses, and then the revolution could happen. Now, does this mean that every time some company goes woke that it's because there was a Marxist sky? Back onto the mic. Hey, we found we found where the subject. We found the subject again. We're back to the Mr. Potato Head bullshit. And, uh, behind the decision. And no, Do and Dr. Sure, like, yeah, some of these people in these positions that are pushing for this stuff are legitimate Marxists, but the vast majority are just overly educated, eternally progressing virtue signalers. But when it comes to who is allowing these things to be pushed and to enter the mainstream, that's a different discussion. Because the people at the top, they could stop this woke stuff within a business day if they wanted to, but they don't. Why is that? Because ultimately, wokeness is good for big business. It's definitely not good for small business, and it's definitely not good for the economy. But it is certainly— Literally, at this point, he's just dropping buzzwords that his that he knows that his boomer viewers want to hear. Ooh, it bad for small business. It it only good for big bad business. It's 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 not good for entrepreneur. What 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 is any? Only this... good for big business. Just look at where big business put their money in twenty twenty. 
they know that this coalition, you know, it's, it's probably going to piss off a lot of their customers in the meantime, but ultimately it's going to bring them more power and more wealth because it's going to consolidate the majority coalition in this country to be perfectly aligned with whatever the mainstream narrative is, which is how these people are so delusional that they think yeah, that they're yeah, the counterculture system. despite having the support of every institution in society. What are the consequences of wokeness, mass immigration, feminism? also known as increased supply of labor, also known as decreased cost of labor, promotion of anti-Americanism, also known as erosion of sovereignty, also known as global free trade, which has been bankrupting our country for what? decades. What? Because remember- What is he talking about? This is just a slurry. This is just word salad. Big business has no allegiance to our country or to its people, just to their money. And while we have to deal with the consequences of their decisions and their propaganda, they can just live in gated communities. They can go live somewhere else. They are post-national. They have evolved past the concept of a nation or a homelander, so they think. They're globalists. And so given this, I would present ah, two there simple- Ah, here comes the JQ stuff. Rules. The first one being that the state can either rule over the economy or the economy can either rule over the state. Someone's going to be at the top of the power hierarchy and it's either going to be the state or big business. And the problem with it being big business is that we can't even vote them out. The amount of power that big business has over you and me in this country Here comes be the, the national socialism dream for a dictator of days past. What does this mean? Well, it means that the government should be able to guarantee my freedom of speech in the new public square. That's what it means. They should have they should have that power before some woke Here tech company has the power to take it away under the guise of private companies, which they ultimately seek to destroy anyways. And secondly, that politics is downstream from culture, but culture can also be downstream from politics. It isn't just a one-way street. It can go either way. Now, here's a thought experiment. Here's a thought experiment. Just ask yourself if these could be true. Is it at least possible that the United States of America, like many other nations throughout the history of the world, will reach a point where it will be impossible to salvage her? Is it at least possible that the left, given how rapidly we've arrived at this state and given how little power we have left in society, will do that damage within the next 10 years? Is it at least possible that given that we have spent the last century losing the culture, that we don't have enough time or power to take back the culture, which would influence our politics? Given that politics can influence culture as well, and given that we can still hypothetically win elections, is it at least possible that the only path forward is to win elections? Now we reach the obvious objection. Well, we've been winning elections this whole time. We've controlled the presidency. We've controlled all three branches of government at least twice. Well, what's different this time? Here it comes. Here it comes. Get ready, everybody. So true. So true. I don't know. Let's continue the thought experiment. Given that our old attitude of- He's just asking questions, right? Don't use power because that's what the left would do. And even while they're doing it and beating us, we're actually winning because we have our principles. We're beautiful losers. Given that that hasn't worked out at all, and given that, or assuming that, I should say, assuming that what we care I more about you, the folks? future of the country that our children will grow up in than we do about these abstract principles, which might I remind you, are literally the reason that your children are being indoctrinated into questioning their gender, into abandoning God, into hating you, and into hating themselves if they're white. Do you understand how incredible that is? That they shifted the literal United States of America, the greatest nation in the history of the world, to where it is now in less than a hundred years. Can you believe- Damn, looks like your country sucked, dude. Looks like, it looks like your ideas lost. Looks like you were losing the intellectual war and the spiritual war, just like you're going to keep losing it because of people like me. People like me who are more evolved than you, you pathetic, not no Jack fucking uh, 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 untermensch are going to be destroyed by the transgender army of the future. That's right. John Doyle, your days are numbered and you know you're losing. Leave that. How did they do it? They did it because we had weak people representing us, so-called conservatives who in effect have. You mean like you? served nothing except their status as losers. And I don't need to remind you that when you lose in politics, it doesn't just mean, ah, we'll get them next time. No, it actually means that you and I are going to have our lives destroyed, literally. We don't exist in their version of the future. They don't want unity. They don't want us. So where do we go? Where do you think? We don't want you, John Doyle. There's plenty of people who probably watch your content who would be perfectly capable of being worked with. But people like you, desperate, pathetic, Fearful, quivering losers, betas, not people who are too afraid to jack their own dick because you think that it will destroy your spirit. No, we don't need people like you. The future doesn't need betas like you. 
We don't need people who are so scared of their own sexuality that they retreat into fucking hate and disgust like a worm, like a pathetic whining worm. No, we don't need people like you. In fact, uh, people like you aren't prepared to deal with the challenges of the future. People like you, people like John Doyle, are not prepared to deal with the challenges that the human race will inevitably encounter. People like John Doyle are too weak to be able to evolve beyond this planet. People like John Doyle are too weak to even be able to address climate change. People like John Doyle are too scared of their own sexual and gender identity that they need to make it illegal, that they need to kill you, or at least joke about killing you, wink, wink, in order to avoid thinking about it. That's how pathetic people like John Doyle are. What'd they do to the opposition throughout history? Think about it. But anyways, given all that, is it at least possible that the only way forward, assuming that there is a way forward, is to elect people to represent us who are capable and not afraid of wielding power the same way that our enemies have done to us in the last hundred years? Is it at least possible? I don't know. It's just a thought experiment. I think just a thought experiment. Let's have an authoritarian government take over and impose right wing rule. Do you know what we call that? Do you, know, do you know what we call that, everyone? When you have an authoritarian take over and impose right-wing rule against the globalists? We call that fascism. We call that Nazism. Yeah, that's what we call that, dude. I think I used the word enemy there, perhaps accidentally. I don't know. I've just always operated under the assumption that whoever wants to take my rights away is my enemy. And given that the communists have no allegiance to my country, I don't exactly know if I should grant them the exemption of countrymen. Are you seriously suggesting that communists shouldn't be allowed to indoctrinate tens of millions of people into supporting the destruction of the United States? Damn, OP communists literally already indoctrinating tens of thousands of people. Its constitution and its economy and its culture and its history and its way of life and its language and its values and its future. That's not very conservative of you. Yeah, you're right. You're right, because if there's one thing I've learned studying conservative politics as much as I have, it's that actually wanting to conserve the country isn't conservative. No one actually wants to conserve anything. Even Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, it's a toy. It's still a staple of a. He's oh, oh, John Doyle getting a little, uh oh, getting a little bit of self-awareness that you're getting mad about a plastic potato. American culture. Conservatives think that they can just like let all the little things go. They can just prepare to conserve. They think all they can just ugh, these neocons. They think they can ignore Mr. Potato Head. He matters. His mustache matters. The Mr. Matters. I swear. I swear it. Please let me jack it. I just wanted to jack it to Mrs. Potato Head, but now I can't. I can't let go of my taters the important things but then they just go ahead and don't conserve those either but the reality is that you have to defend everything it's the horseshoe theory yet again you've got the low iq people like no not potato head damn it and then you've got the average iq people like are you really upset about a potato then you've got the high iq people like apathy towards incrementalism results inevitably in absolutism or <laughs> he's literally self-conscious about being mad about the potato you're mad about a potato you dumb bitch you're mad about a toy potato. You're a cuck. You're soy facing right now as we watch you about a potato, a children's plaything, John Doyle. My potato. Oh. Oreo is pro trans. Who cares? Me. You actually have to stand up. I'm inclined to think that they would have just kept it. Mr. Potato Head gender neutral if people hadn't gotten mad about it. But even the compromise is a loss for us. Even the idea of, hey, we're going to keep Mr. Potato Head. Don't worry. But we're also just going to add more gender neutral potatoes. And then conservatives go, ah, you're still so mad about the potato. Whew. As long as I can keep Mr. Potato Head, I'm okay. It's that other stuff I didn't like. But here's the thing. We all knew that even though they're potatoes, even though they don't have any discerning features, we all still knew that they're Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head. Everybody knew that. But now as they have their 21st century rebrand, our children are being introduced to these ideas through their toys. This idea of, well, if this potato wants to be this gender, then it can be. Or if it wants to be this gender, then it can be. Oh, the potatoes! The potatoes! Oh, remember what they took from you! Oh, remember what they took from you! Remember what they took from you! The potatoes! Oh, glory to the Fuhrer! We need the potatoes! 
recipe and it can marry the other potato, any potato it wants. Look, there's no difference between them. They're all just potatoes. And again, that's true. But what's happening here is what's Clip intended it. to happen here. Clip which is it. why they did this in the first Clip place. It and send it and to you gay know fish. that this is true because LGBT organizations are celebrating this as a victory. So they'll say, what? No, you're crazy. They're just potatoes. But then they're actually <laughs> celebrating this because they know what it's going to do, which is teach children the framework for what they will then be taught thoroughly when they get to school, which is that there is no difference between boys and girls, not mentally, not behaviorally, nothing. And if there is, it's only because of social listen, construct. Listen, Gayfesh, that's because, listen, that's because when you're putting your tongue in Mr. P in the in the potato hole, you can taste the difference between Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. The only difference between Trust me, boys John and girls Doyle would is know. the reproductive organs. And even those don't decide what a boy or a girl is. That's up to you. Anyone can be a boy if they want to be. Anyone can be any gender they want to be. None of this True, has to make sense. True, you can. Because it's True, being... you motherfucking can. And John Doyle, guess what? The coolest thing about all of it, if, if you don't get, if it doesn't make you feel good to be whatever gender you want to be, guess what? You'll make John Doyle mad by doing it. There you fucking go. Exactly, children. Devious Chilster. You can taste the potato straight. And the iron law of propaganda is that the earlier you start conditioning, the less it actually has to make sense. That's why they do it with toys. You got the Miss Monopoly feminist wage gap propaganda game. It's literally about brainwashing the masses, like starting as. It's Monopoly. It's fucking Monopoly. You fucking weirdo young as possible this is what no jacking it does to a motherfucker you stop jacking it and you you get so desperate and anxious you start freaking out about mr potato head to be a member of the homogenous coalition of woke that can be mobilized at an instant to give power and wealth hey, away from the american so people much. to the ruling class thank you so much. via the privatized propaganda apparatuses that are owned and controlled by that Both same ruling you. class thank but you hey so much. at least it's not explicitly the government right right conservatives China's brainwashing Muslims. What the heck? Meanwhile, American children are internalizing the same genre of harmful propaganda, but it's okay because it's mostly being done by, by private companies. I don't want the Chinese telling the Muslims what to think. Damn it. Hey, Dad, I saw the same thing on TV about us, and we talked about it in school. And no, not now, son. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, genociding Muslims is the same thing as a p Mr. Potato Head going away, I guess. To explain what I heard on Fox News. What's the recent example? Hyatt. Hyatt got backlash for trying to justify that it hosted CPAC in Orlando. Sure. Keep in mind that's the exception, not the rule. The woke coalition is cancerous what? and it will infect everything. And here's another question. CPAC is very basic tier conservatism, very establishment, very tip of the iceberg. And apparently we can't even have that. Even that is unacceptable. Dude, they literally were doing not they were literally signaling Nazi talking points at CPAC. You're you've lost the plot, John. You've lost the plot. Then what is acceptable? Ask anyone who's mad at Hyatt right now, and they won't have an answer. And it's not because they're hypocrites. And it's not because they're stupid. They're dumb. It's because the answer doesn't exist. Because nothing is acceptable. They don't want unity. They don't want what? you. We have nothing in common anymore. There is nothing under which we can unify. It's irreparable. At this point, we're basically just fighting for control over the economy, the military, and the geography of the country. That's why we actually have to support the companies who are still American companies, not post-national companies, not even transnational companies, American companies. That's the most important factor when I take sponsors. Dry so swallow. keep that in mind. They're taking Dry risks by swallow. actually prioritizing the American people and also by affiliating themselves with yours truly. iTarget's a great example. They make a sled that integrates with your smartphone. Ah, wow, wow. Okay, all right, dude, I'll give you that one. That one was smooth. That was a smooth transition into you plugging your fucking capitalist product, you pig. John Doyle is a sad joke. And I just want you to know, just take a moment, that no matter how much they call everyone else fragile, they are literally, they are literally the most fucking fragile people in the entire world. No one is more fragile than people, than conservatives, Nazis, like John Doyle.